Hey folks, Fernando doing our video for the Marshall Revivalist. And before I get started with this video, this is gonna be a um, knife review. I'm gonna be taking a look at the Kershaw Vault SS stainless steel, but I'm also gonna be talking about folding knives in general for survival and preparedness. My take on it, the kind of things I'm looking for, and the things I think you should uh, look for yourself as well. Before I go on with the video though, I wanna thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. Look folks, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really helps out here in the channel if you like the content here, subscribing, sharing the videos, it really it means a lot and it helps quite a bit. Also, if you're interested in my take on survival preparedness, the way I go about it, remember there's my books, Street Survival Skills, Modern Survival Manual, and Bugging Out and Relocating, which is over there. Links for all of that, it's gonna be there below. So, what is it in this case that I have? The Kershaw Vault, this beautiful, nice knife. Short version of the review, yes, it is quite good. Do get it if you're looking for a decent little knife. Actually, not so not so little. It is actually like eight centimeters, eight centimeters of, of blade, almost not quite four inches, but close to it, three and something, maybe. Anyway, decent enough blade. Man, I like it. I think it does everything I want to have in a folding knife, a good EDC knife. You're getting it here. I mean, I know enough about knives at this point that I can tell you right away. This thing is well designed. I have no idea who RJ Martin design is. I guess that's the designer of the knife, but I can tell you right away, the guy knows what he's doing. This is a beautiful blade design, beautiful, just very well done. People sometimes think all knives are kind of the same. Sure they are, but to a point, the devil is in those little details and the details here are quite good. You have a nice curving edge there all the way to a very nice tip that's not too narrow yet narrow enough to be very you know pointy and that's something I like you of course have a compromise there where sure this tip is not going to be as strong as this tip right here right there's going to be a difference here but if you're careful enough this tip will be more than than enough for most tasks that you need something very pointy um, stabby self-defense absolutely i love it this for that um, and if you end up breaking and using it in something more hardcore, which may seem a little bit of, a, of an abuse, then, I mean, it is still gonna be working. You're gonna be making, it, making maybe breaking it about here, right? Let's say that happens, you're gonna be breaking it here. If that, you know, if you're not careful enough, that wouldn't be a problem. You can just reshape it, still good enough, but I like that I at least have it. If I end up losing it later on, that's okay, but at least I have it from the get-go. And uh, I've, you know, one of, one of the nicer blade shapes I've seen in a while. It's also nice that he went with a very high uh, hollow grind, which is kind of popular these days for some of the high-end custom-made knives. Some of the pricey, fancy knives are going with that. That just allows you to do a very narrow angle in the edge. It's which is not the case here. This is gonna be like a 30, 40, uh, maybe 30, between 30 and 40 inclusive. And you could take this down quite a bit more, but that's gonna be giving you a, a sharp yet tough enough angle. But with this hollow grind that you have here, you can go with a lot of a, with, with, a, with a much a steeper angle and make this knife a lot sharper. Although the edge is not gonna be as strong because there's always that compromise, but you have the option of going with year one while still having a nice thick blade, right? Handle is very well designed for my uh, large hands. You know, I use large gloves, so it's like a medium, large-ish hand. I have no problem with this. This is working great for me. It actually fits these finger grows quite nicely. Even if you have like a small hand, you wouldn't, sure, maybe your knuckle is not gonna be aligned there all that nicely. Maybe if you have like a little hand, it would go more like that, I guess. Uh, but this is so thin that your hand will just wrap around it without any issue. And if you have a big paw of a hand, you're still having like, well, it's like four inches of, of real estate there in the handle. Like I still have a little bit left there. So unless you have a huge, massive hand where maybe you wanna go with something like this banana, <laughs> as it were, my son used for the the large vaquero, the vaquero grande, sure, but this is actually kind of like a banana shape. This is not realistic for a human hand. This is much more fitting and would make sense for most people uh, unless you have some, you know, a big foot hand.
band going on there. Um, and yeah, these fit nicely. This is all stainless steel, but it it's like sandblasted, so you have a little bit of traction there. HCR 13 MOV is the stainless steel using the knife. I like that steel very much because you find it in some budget-friendly knives, but it's quite decent stainless steel. Holds on uh, an edge nicely, easy to sharpen, and yes, it is stainless steel, which it's nice not to have your blade rust on you when least expected. So design-wise, I love it. Um, then you have the flipper where you deploy this just by putting a little bit of pressure. This is assisted, not automatic. Automatic knives are banned in many places. Assisted knives are not. So an, uh, an automatic blade means that you have a button that you press and you release assist them. This is something that you put a little bit of pressure and you have a spring that assists you in the opening. Seems like a, a technical manner and it is, but the legal difference is huge. One is illegal, one is not. As Assisted, most places not illegal whatsoever. And on all practical things, yeah, it, all, it works kind of like a, looks like automatic. You think, yeah, that's automatic because you just put, no, assisted blade. And it's gonna be having a frame lock. Frame lock, like you find in some of these high-end knives, like this Zero Tolerance, this is one I carry mostly these days. Actually, for the last few years, it's been my knife. And this is a, a nice liner lock, so a, a nice frame lock. This is all titanium, massive, strong, this is more than enough guys sometimes people lose mi their minds over how fragile one is this is gonna be okay this is a pretty sturdy actually pretty sturdy frame lock I mean I've never had a problem even with my um, Leatherman and the, the flimsy little the liner lock that it has, that's quite small, but still I haven't had a problem. And I've used this blade quite a bit without any issues, actually sometimes very forcefully, not a problem. So sometimes people over overdo the, how strong is my folding knife? Look, over the years I've used uh, way too many of these things and honestly, I've had problems very rarely. Once was with a knockoff version of the Spyderco Endura. It was a, a Chinese knockoff of the of the Delica or something like that, it's like a smaller version. And it actually worked okay up till up to a point where years later the, the plastic just, just failed on me. The, the cheap plastic of the knockoff broke and when the plastic broke uh, it, it kind of came loose and the system, uh, the, the locking system failed and it closed on, on my hand. Fortunately I didn't uh, cut myself but yeah that would be one of the times it failed. It was a knockoff, it was not the real deal uh, and it was actually after a lot of use and and, you know, certainly not the case here. This is all steel. It is not going to be breaking on you that easily. And you have to go very hard on it just to actually have that go on. Um, it actually engages very well. It has like a 50% surface contact there, which is exactly what you want. Not only that, it aligns beautifully nicely. You see that? How well aligned? Perfect. Perfectly centered. Uh, I leave the link for this. If I find it, it's not always the case. If I find the Vault SS from Kershaw, I leave the link there below. If not, I'll leave the um, links for something similar, which you know I do on occasions when I don't find the exact same thing. So uh, you have a, a very decent. It's not really all that heavy. It's actually not heavy at all. I'm gonna be using the scale here just to be accurate with this thing. But what is a hundred and Well, so 127 grams of weight, you know, compared to, let's say, this Voyager, um, yeah, there we go. So it's 127, and the Voyager is 139. Sure, this is quite larger, but this is all steel, right? This is not the case here. So you have a larger blade, which is, a, and it's gonna be heavier. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit heavier for its size, but it is all stainless steel. So it makes sense that that's the case, right? Um, I wouldn't be, this should not be a problem for any healthy, normal human being to carry around. It is still quite slim. And yeah, I like this sandblast. It gives you a little bit of traction. It's not all that bad. Uh, some of these stainless steel, I have the, the Spyderco Police, 
piece that is like shiny stainless steel and that's quite slippery this gives you a little bit of traction it's really not not horrible not not great sure this is going to be giving you more traction and if they added scales that would be the case but i like how thin and slim it is and i'm not going to be complaining giving this texture and this shape is going to be staying where you need it a little bit of jimping there for your finger and the guard the flipper becomes the guard on the other side and it gives you that nice choil so as to protect your hand if you're using this more forcefully like in a in a self-defense scenario or you know using it for stabbing something hard or just chopping or beating into something that you need to go through it's it's going to be protecting your hand quite nicely of course it is not going to be a fixed blade but as as folding knives go this is going to be quite okay i like it man i think it's very decent because of all of these things good materials for the budget um excellent design the clip goes in three position would be perfect if it went into four positions but this is good enough it actually rides quite deep in your pocket um the deployment man my son is carrying a um an assisted knife i actually replaced the one he had one that he lost and i gave him a new one but he's a big fan of these assisted knives the only thing he did mention was that this one does not have like a little bit of a couple lines there like a little bit of jimping uh, which i think it's sometimes overdone but he said that in in the one he has it has a little bit of a couple of lines there and it gives him a little bit more traction and it's not as likely to slip i don't think it's that much of a problem here but i get what he says that with a couple little lines which honestly if you if you're that worried you could do that yourself with a dremel or with a little file shouldn't be an issue and it would give you a little bit more traction but overall fantastic i love it the only thing that looks a bit cheap is this sort of thing yeah this plastic thing but i guess it gives you a little bit more traction also so anyway that's that's that but other than that especially for the price the price in the, the amount of knife you get yes yeah, there so in, in terms of, of like a survival knife what is it you want you want just that you want a clip you want something that deploys very easily you want something that you know locks properly um and you're going to be using it for opening amazon boxes uh, opening mail cutting a little bit of string tape usually that sort of thing maybe cutting an apple a sandwich some fruit those are all things people typically use for a, a knife and a, a bunch of other things as well um especially with something as well design as this you will find many applications for that little tip for anything that you want to go like to more detail so be careful about not not breaking it but it's nice that you have it and anything cutting even man cutting a you know dinner steak over a, a wooden plate just to not mess it up you can do that all day long um now thinking of survival emergency scenarios if you're being caught in a machine being dragged underwater uh, because of an accident because of a sinking car cutting a seat belt uh, cutting a piece of clothing that got you know trapped in, in a machine and you're about to be ripped to pieces absolutely a, a, a rope around an arm a leg a neck whatever it is you know this i, I saw this kid once in, a, in an escalator in a, in a mall uh, he got his uh, loose shoelace uh, caught in the machine uh, the mother fortunately stopped it with a big red button that's usually there on the side but the the, the foot was still um, you know the the shoelace was still trapped in the machine i just cut it and, and got him loose from there but that's the kind of thing where you you see that you want to have something that is quick fast that deploys very quickly you don't want to be messing around with this sort of thing right um this is something that you always have in your pocket especially something like this that deploys so nicely um yeah for self-defense absolutely i wouldn't hesitate whatsoever i mean do you have better options sure of course the, the cold steel banana knife is of course better because of the huge reach you have and it's i guess it's also quite intimidating uh, but yeah it's a, a big long knife with a lot of reach now a lot of people don't carry this thing around legal restrictions lifestyle personal choice this is still quite decent this tip will go in nicely this guard will protect your hand well the blade is wide enough so that cause will cause a, a pretty serious wound and if you keep this sharp it will go through meat like butter so you will not be uh, poorly protected in terms of having a folding knife if you have this knife this is actually quite quite decent maybe one of the uh, more successful designs this one sure it's a little bit longer but really not all that much it's really 
really not all that much of a difference. Uh, and I think this one even protects your finger better. I would even go with this one, really, just in terms of you know your hand not slipping forward. Here it's a little bit more likely. Here it's it's not. This little choil there, this little guard is going to be protecting your hand quite quite nicely. So for that third sort of thing, anything that's basically more forceful, that you have to use this for something that's more of a of a hardcore, something of a of a of a tougher job, this little knife will will hold for sure. I would be uh, very surprised if this snaps like you know out of nowhere. Even little details like how they rounded this bit there, you see that? That's the same thing you see in a three hundred dollar knife. You see how it's rounded because if it's not rounded like that, then there's a possibility of a crack. You know appearing here and spreading that is eliminated by that you know little circle that they do there so loving it i highly recommend it i think it's a great knife and yeah there's gonna be the link there below hopefully if i find it anyway guys i hope you like the video take care see you in the next video have an awesome day